new session that is postrophosa neoplasms that is case based concepts and differentiating points i have been traveling this month so i was unable to make the video since last 20 days so these are the common neoplasms which we encounter in both adult and child you can pause the slide and see the, all these tumors i will be covering most important tumors and also discuss the differentiating points between those tumors so coming to the first case 35 year male with history of headache and ataxia you can see there is a cystic lesion noted in the cerebellum which is hyper intense on t1 hyper intense on t2 which is even there is a perilesional significant perilesional edema at center of the tumor on a we contrast there is minimal enhancement in the wall and there is a in intensely enhancing mural nodule located towards the eccentric of the cystic lesion so this tumor has a smooth margins there is a small well defined eccentrically placed nodule which is towards the dural aspect next vascular signal voids are common in these type of tumors even peritumoral edema is also more common in these type of tumors internal septations are less likely syndromic associations are common in these type of tumors and drop metastases are also common in this tumor so we have to screen the spine when we see these type of lesions in the brain so this is a classical case of hemangioblastoma next case 12 year male child with chronic history of headache vomiting and ataxia in 6 months you can see there is a cyst solid cystic lesion in the postrophosa which is heterogeneous to hypointense on t1 there is a irregularly large mural nodule noted towards the ventricular aspect which is hyperintense on flare showing restricted diffusion on dwi and low on adc on a we contrast there is intense heterogeneous enhancement noted within the mural nodule with even internal septations so this is the case of palisatic astrocytoma thanks to dr mohammed ebog sir for contributing this case so in palisatic astrocytoma we usually see irregular tumor margins and there will be large irregular heterogeneous enhancing mural nodule which is usually placed towards the ventricular aspect whereas in hemangioblastoma there is small eccentric nodule placed towards the dural aspect then vascular signal voids are not usually seen peritumoral edema is less common when compared with hemangioblastomas internal septations are usually seen in palisatic astrocytoma syndromic associations are less likely drop metastases are also less common so this is a case of palisatic astrocytoma so we'll try to see the differentiating points between both Uh, in hemangioblastoma it is mostly seen between 22 to 66 years of age and the mean is at 38 years the and palisatic astrocytoma is seen in young age and mean is 12 years tumor margins are usually smooth in hemangioblastoma irregular in palisatic astrocytoma mural nodule is small eccentric intense homogeneously enhancing and placed towards the dural aspect in hemangioblastoma whereas in palisatic astrocytoma it is large irregular heterogeneously enhancing mural nodule and placed towards the ventricular aspect vascular signal voids are usually seen in hemangioblastoma or not seen in palisatic astrocytoma irregular marginated enhancing cyst wall this is not usually seen in hemangioblastoma but usually seen in uh, palisatic astrocytoma peritumoral edema is more common in hemangioblastoma less common in palisatic astrocytoma internal septations are less common in hemangioblastoma more common in palisatic astrocytoma syndromic associations are more common in hemangioblastoma less common in palisatic astrocytoma drop metastases are also more common in hemangioblastoma and less common in palisatic astrocytoma so remember all these points which helps in differentiating hemangioblastoma from palisatic astrocytoma and this is also case of you can see there is a cystic lesion with eccentrically placed intensely enhancing mural nodule and there is even in mural nod and also nodular lesion in the spinal cord so this is a hemangioblastoma with drop metastasis and there are multiple cystic lesions in the pancreas and in the kidney so this is a case of hemangioblastoma with drop metastasis and von hippel linda disease next case 32 year female with history of headache and unable to walk since 2 years you can see there is a cystic lesion seen filling the fourth ventricle which is hypointense on t1 hyperintense on t2 not completely suppressed on flare so this this is typical dirty csf appearance which is not completely suppressed on flare and showing typical restricted diffusion on dwi and low on adc these are the coronal images and sagittal images where it is also seen extending into the uh, cisterna magna and there is no significant enhancement on iv contrast so this is a classical case of epidermoid cyst so whenever you see a hyperintense lesion on t2 filling the fourth ventricle showing dirty csf appearance that is incomplete suppression on flare with restricted diffusion on dwi remember epidermoid cyst as one of the most common differential diagnosis next case 21 year male with history of headache seizures vomiting and ataxia for 2 weeks you can see there is a cystic lesion arising from the roof of the fourth ventricle which is showing restricted diffusion on dwi low on adc 
which is hypointense on T1, this is heterogeneously hyperintense on T2 with few cystic areas, it is hyperintense on flare, even there is subtle areas of blooming on GRE noted within the lesion. The lesion is also causing obstructive heterocephalus with periventricular CSFOs. On AV contrast, it's showing patchy heterogeneous enhancement. So this is a classical case of medulloblastoma. So whenever you see a cystic lesion arising from the, the solid lesion arising from the floor of the fourth ventricle, which is typically showing restricted diffusion on DWA and which is solid in appearance, typically remember medulloblastoma. Thanks to Dr. Veel Nemetala sir for contributing this case. Next case, same case that is medulloblastoma only, but if I have shown CT where you can see this is hyperdense on CT, which is usually hyperdense due to high cellularity. So whenever you encounter a tumor which is hyperdense on CT uh, due, due to high cellularity and showing intense heterogeneous enhancement, typically remember medulloblastoma. So this is also a case of medulloblastoma. Next case, seven year male with history of headache, vomiting, hearing loss, came with sudden onset of back pain, ataxia, urinary retention and weakness of both lower limbs. I, I have already shown this uh, case in my previous videos. You can see there is a cystic lesion arising from the floor of the fourth ventricle, no restricted diffusion on DWI, showing multiple cystic component, which is hyperintense on flare, subtle areas of blooming on GRE and this cystic lesion is also seen herniating into the postrophosa even the cisterna magna and into the upper cervical spinal cord with adjacent perlesional edema. It's showing intense heterogeneous enhancement and this is also seen squeezing into the cisterna magna and into the upper cervical spinal cord and showing patchy heterogeneous enhancement and also there are enhancing nodular lesions noted along the spinal cord and even in the vertebra. So this is a classical case of ependymoma with drop metastasis in spine and even bone and also you can see there are bilateral vestibular schwannomas. Even there is irregular thickening of the bilateral yait now, so there is also vestibular schwannomas. So this was associated, this was case turned out to be a NF2 or miss me association, but the meningiomas are not seen. So remember these mnemonic that is French spills. So that F is floro, the lesion ependymomas usually arises from the floor of the fourth ventricle. They even extension into the CSS spaces. There will be no restricted diffusion on DWI. Cystic changes, cystic degeneration, calcification, hemorrhage are more common in ependymomas and plastic tumor that is this tumor typically extends through the CSS spaces into the cervical spinal cord and also it has typically has the seedling into CSF. So this is a mnemonic where you can remember all the points regarding ependymoma and helps in and these help in differentiating this from medulloblastoma. So these are the differentiating points you can see this age and also hyperdensity due to high cell art in medulloblastoma which is not seen in ependymoma calcification hemorrhage extension to CSS spaces are common or less commonly seen in medulloblastoma or more commonly seen in ependymoma restricted diffusion is usually seen in medulloblastoma which is not commonly seen in ependymomas next case 26 year female with history of headache scissors what type on imbalance while walking for two weeks you can see there is a cystic lesion seen in the uh, cerebellum with expansion of the right cerebellar hemisphere and also you can see multiple abnormal enlarged folia which are typically mimicking tigroid appearance in the right cerebellum and also this is heterogeneous hyperintense on flare and showing patchy heterogeneous enhancement on IV contrast. So this is typically mimicking the tigroid pattern. So these are widened cerebellar folia which mimic tigroid appearance also known as cordura laminated appearance which is classical for larmentary ductulose disease and differentials can be cerebellitis or subacute infarcts. So larmentary ductulose disease also known as dysplastic cerebellar ganglocytoma and P10 mutations are usually found. It can be associated with Cowden syndrome. Then it is called as Cowden syndrome with larmentary ductulose called as cold syndrome. So typically remember this uh, tigroid appearance in larmentary ductulose disease. So coming we can sum up all the findings in this image. You can see this, this is a cystic lesion with peripherally placed mural nodule towards the dural aspect with significant perilegial edema. This is a case of hemangioblastoma, solid cystic lesion in a pediatric age group which is showing irregular large mural nodule and even internal septations and showing intense heterogeneous enhancement. So this is a case of pilocytic astrocytoma and this, whenever you see a solid lesion arising from the uh, roof of the fourth ventricle which is showing restricted diffusion on DWI, typically remember medulloblastoma. And also whenever you see cystic lesion which is typically uh, extending or squeezing through the CSS spaces into the upper cervical spinal cord with drop metastasis, think of ependymomas. And whenever you see a 
cystic lesion which is sh which is showing dirty csf appearance or incomplete suppression flare with restricted diffusion on dwa so this is this dirty csf appearance with restricted diffusion on dwa remember epidermoid cyst so thank you all